Sagittarius singles, welcome, super singles, completely singles, totally singles. It's a meet the soulmate read. This is an always positive read because it simply asks the question, who is the right one for Sagittarius? Who is Sagittarius' soulmate? So if you see a three of swords or the tower or something scary, uh, give it a minute and uh, we'll see. Um, it's going to have to do with them. Um, it's not going to be something bad. So I got to think this is like one of the least triggery uh, readings you could watch. <laughs> Always keep that in mind as we go along here. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, just as you would with your whether you resonate. Uh, keep that in mind as I call out some of the signs. Uh, I will try to be specific with this reading. It's eight cards, and I'll try to pull out some astrology along with personal history, get some maybe stories they might tell. Uh, personality, psychology, behavior, uh, tend to be what I focus on. And I'll look at their emotional aspects, their intellectual aspects, sexual love aspects, core values of lifestyle, the four areas of life I call the four pillars of a sound relationship. And hopefully with these, try to get a bead on them and try to get to know them a little bit. I do feel that this is a projective read, purely, so this is someone that you would not be involved with right now would be someone new coming into your life within this time frame call it the end of October all right so ten of wands this is in the emotional position and upper card and below that is the magician wow um, fighter I do usually see the moon here I'm going to think about the moon. The Ten of Wands, you know, it has the moon depicted in it. So, Nine of Cups at the intellectual position. Upper again can be kind of up in your intellect, uh, consciousness below, unconsciousness, your feeling states. And you have the Nine of Cups over the Wheel of Fortune. Man, this has got Sagittarius written all over it. This Jupiter Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Cups. Wow. Could speak to Pisces too. But like, I'm thinking, I want to narrow this down. I got the feeling this could be a ninth house of uh, Pisces. Now we're, I'm not good enough to think back. Okay, wait. So the tenth house uh, is Aquarius. Uh, no, is Aries. And the eleventh house is Taurus. And the twelfth house is Gemini. So their first house is Cancer. So this would be a Cancer Ascendant. You could possibly say then this is a Cancer Ascendant person. I had to do that in my head. Well, you know what I mean. If we know, you know, that they got their son here, we could make a guess, maybe. I just have a feeling about it. It's got this Jupiter energy on it, too. You know, Jupiter co-rules Pisces and all the ancient ruler. And I always find that when Pisces comes together with Jupiter, when Neptune comes together with Jupiter, it's a deep spirituality. You know, Neptune's tricky and, and Pisces tricky. It tends to dissolve things. It's such a trickster. Um, but I think when it gets together with Jupiter, that it really brings out the kind of most spiritual aspects of both. So, it, generally speaking, with Jupiter and uh, Neptune aspects, I see uh, spirituality emphasized, deep spirituality. Uh, it's the, not the religiosity of Sagittarius, and it's not the just the meditative uh, egolessness of Nirvana at the height of Pisces, but some combination you know and it is uh, fire and, and water uh, coming together too uh, water in a fire house so it's hard not to see this ten of wands as a fire moon too um, it definitely could be a Sagittarius moon it's got moon depicted up there it's a it's going to be the busiest mind, the Sagittarius moon. Uh, I like it. I used to get along great with Sagittarius moons. Uh, they tend to be very intellectually curious, um, very positive. Uh, again, Jupiter is all over them. 
So this would be a Pisces person that has a lot of Jupiterian energy. And they may actually like be one of those people, you know, we don't believe in astrology, is because people maybe like this person would say, I don't know if they're in astrology from looking at this with the magician under the Ten of Wands, definitely a possibility. Um, they have a opening in them to the uh, a veil in the other side. Um, they can manifest. Um, they've got to have something along those lines go on, you know. Um, but with this fire energy and Jupiter energy, they may present themselves more like a fire sign. So they'd be like, well, I'm supposed to be all sensitive and Pisces and all this. And, you know, I'm kind of a rowdy asshole and rah, 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 a little bit of a fire going on or something like that. And laughing. And I could definitely see that. And they may even understand the joke, you know, because that's just it. It's like we're, we don't always act like a fire sign is what astrology is all about. So it could be a classic example here. Now, let's look at the good stuff, the sexual queen of swords. Who doesn't love a queen of swords in bed, huh? Yeah, could you, like, uh, put that sword off to the side for a sec, hon? Yeah, woo, and a queen of wands. Hello. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken, dinner. I, I just got to tell you, I'll, I'll sort through it here. We got the Pisces sun, because I want to pull the Venus and Mars, what feels right here. I'm going to look at the rest of this, come back to the sexual part, but ooh la wee, Queen of Swords and the Queen of Wands. I mean, it is some sexy energy and dominant too. I don't care if it's a queen, a dominant queen. Both of them, she's got her staff in her head, her wands right there, the Queen of Wands. And that's some sexy business right there, Queen of Wands. That's the Mars. That's the Mars right there. And you know what that's got to be? You know it's an Aries Mars. I mean, just look at this Queen of Wands. Is that not a Xena, the Princess Warrior? Is that not the Aries Mars? Now, here's the thing with this person. Their Venus is Aquarius. That's Aquarius Venus right there. <laughs> yes, it is. So, uh, it, interesting stories they will tell. If they get into any trouble or into any relationships, they sure shit don't uh, not know what they're doing. This person here uh, can handle people, uh, can handle situations. Um, um, they're probably just born that way. Um, you know, um, they've got this very fiery Mars um, and this calculating Venus in... It's also, you know, the girlfriend's of Venus, and Aquarius, to my surprise, is one of the most loving, sweet, you know, sensitive uh, creatures I've ever met. Um, and turns out, and Aquarius Mars is like that, you know, they, but they just want to love everyone. Um, it's that kind of energy. Um, it's also very strong, very outspoken, tends to be very confident. Um, this is a desire nature, too. Um, they're they know what they want in life because it's fixed air communication and with the queen of wands i think in being an aries here mars uh, i think you could say they know what they want and they know how to get it man or woman they know what they want and they know how to get it okay five of swords this is in their core values and in their lifestyle we have the eight of swords so we got to go back to their childhood for a minute with this Sagittarius moon. I notice like Sagittarius fourth house people, they usually have mothers that are flaky. I hate to say if you're from fourth house, the mother of a fourth house, Sag. Mm. It doesn't always have to be that way. If the Venus and the Mars is well aspected somehow. Maybe it just points to a lot of freedom in their childhood. Um, but this person, they would have felt... Uh, really um, oppressed by their childhood, burdened by their childhood. I'm trying to think of the stories they may tell. I'm not really getting any sense that they have other siblings, but they may. But if they're either an, an eldest child, you know, there's a real psychology to the birth order that's probably more relevant than many things in psychology. You know, many practicing psychologists will tell you. Birth order usually pans out, you know, the, the uh, advice on it. So either this is an older child or an only child. 
And I think somehow they had to carry the burden uh, of the parents. And it may have been helping around the house. You know, just as an example, and not just helping, like actually running the house. And so that would have made them really, it's an older child energy now, and they had to take care of them. And somehow they managed to do it. You know? So there's a magician, it's also this resourcefulness that can be there. And it comes next to the Wheel of Fortune. And over the Nine of Cups, you know, again, that's why I'm saying, this, the energy they have is happy energy, outgoing energy. This is a person, as you engage them, they're going to be fun and outgoing and bright-eyed and quick. This uh, Moon and Sag is quick and can discourse on things. And it just is a very cool energy, uh, kind of high-vibe energy. Um, usually it's not any kind of draining thing or anything or uh, it's not the people talking over you or trying to dominate you um, they're, it's just kind of this happy they're like uh, horses frolicking in a field that's Sagittarius energy and they're just kind of happy to be alive uh, time, kind of energy um, and I, you got to see this emotional stuff is carrying over to their core values and lifestyle um, they they have the sense that with this magician they were able to do it But they will tell you a story that and they're not lying. I had to fight for everything I got I had to fight tooth and nail for everything I got and it was not easy and it was lonely and I had to be strong and I was But this has been my life and now you look you go back to their love and sex nature these two queens tell it all with them the desire nature and Mars, the will and the sexual nature. How we use force or don't. This person can use force. Again, uh, they can get what they want. They know how to get. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean they can manifest. They got the magician down here in their core. Um, they can just manifest and very powerfully so. And so again, when they present themselves to the world, what the world is going to see most of all is this Queen of Swords and the Queen of Wands. Um, and it can be a, a little bit of Ice Princess energy thrown in um, with this a, a real, this would be real set, man or woman, powerful sex appeal, um, a, a magnetism about them. Um, they would uh, easily uh, it could dominate a conversation or a group just, just by their presence. It could be just their physique. Uh, they're no, you know, it, they're just going to project this energy of uh, strength and confidence. And with the uh, ten, uh, with the uh, Sag Moon here, I believe they can kind of back it up. I mean, anybody they could be witty, they can be fast, um, they can make a cutting remark out of nowhere to just slice somebody right in half, and no problem doing it. They, you know, then this is your soul. I'm not saying they're perfect. Uh, but so, you know, it, it, again, you know, it, it probably wouldn't naturally perceive this person to be a Pisces. But I believe like deep down, you know, they pay a cost uh, to present this front to and stuff. And um, in terms of their home life, um, it's hard to say. Um, they're likely going to have something to say about things and have certain... Demands, demands, uh, needs, or something like if you were to come together in a home. Because um, they, they definitely have this uh, defensive energy. So whatever it is they do, um, they feel like they can't probably really be themselves when they do it. Uh, they feel like they're kind of uh, working outside the system, working against the system uh, on their own. It's just a kind of a constant battle they might feel under with this Five of Swords because you're not really winning with the Five of Swords. It's that fight that you you look back on and it's like, you know, what really was accomplished out of that, all that fighting? And I think that is shown with the Eight of Swords. So they may have with them like this a little bit of sadness. You know, I imagine a story they're going to tell too comes to mind is when they left this family, uh, which was probably in fairly early in their teenage years. I believe they probably decided to strike out on their own as quickly as possible, um, either through engaging with a lover, moving on, 
are just engaging in life and, you know, getting a job, getting their own place. And it was a tremendous guilt associated because I think this person operated as a caregiver. Um, but, you know, they had to get away from it. And I think that's what they carry with them, this eight of swords. Um, it reminds me of soldiers, you know, you don't, it doesn't go away. You know, you, you're going to carry that for the rest of your life um, that you lost these guys you were close with and that special bond that only uh, war seems to bring out, that love that men have. Um, so it's that kind of survivor's guilt or something like that. Um, that's part of uh, how they are. Um, so there may be a little heaviness about them um, that you might notice uh, around the home. Like something that flashes through their eyes, a little vibe they give off. And you might even notice, go, what was that? No, I was just thinking about my brother. And he probably passed away uh, not so long ago from diabetes or something. Or it's like that, you know. Um, so I, I get the feeling, too, they'll probably tell you a story. They're not real close to their family. Um, maybe didn't make a big deal out of it, like cutting them off. But they just don't really talk that much of uh, funerals and weddings type of situation. So I think that tells us a lot about your person here, Sagittarius. Let me know uh, what you think. Uh, again, probably won't meet him right away. But when you do, a week or two from now, get back to me and say, Hey, Dave, what the fuck? I just met this person you were talking about. So thank you, guys.